thank you all for joining us today to learn more about the Rural Disaster Home Repair Grants that uh, Rural Development and USDA have. I'm Nikki Gronley, the State Director for USDA Rural Development. I'd like to introduce you to the team that's here today to talk about the program. Uh, first, we have our new Single Family Housing Program Director, Michael Matlin, who's going to be doing the presentation today. We've got our Deputy State Director, Dana Kleinsaucer, with us. Uh, from Single Family Housing, we have um, our loan expert, Roxanne Woodring. And then also with us today from the Single Family Housing uh, Guaranteed Program, we have Kevin Smith, and he's going to join us today to add a few words about the Guaranteed Program and what they can do. So South Dakota has 35 eligible South Dakota counties due to the Presidential Disaster Declaration for weather incidents in 2022. 1.5 million is available for home repair or reimbursing homeowners for repairs already made if they uh, were covered by were covered by the home buyer in 2022. Um, repairs that were covered by insurance or FEMA are not eligible for reimbursement, but those out-of-pocket costs by home buyers are. Uh, funding will remain until expended, and we expect the dollars to go quickly. We've invited all of you, our partners, to learn more about the program and be the first step in getting the word out. We know you all have contacts in many of the affected areas and can help us spread the word. Uh, we're recording today's webinar, and we're going to make that available to you after the uh, event today. We'll get that out probably tomorrow sometime. If you have questions, please put them in the chat and we're going to monitor those during the presentation. At the end, we're then going to leave some time to take questions. Um, you know, when appropriate, I'll make sure that I just uh, let Michael Matlin know we've got a question in the chat. We'll try and get it answered as we go. But at the end, we're going to open up uh, you know, the mics for a little bit and let you ask additional questions. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we look forward to serving these counties and helping take care of those homes that maybe were damaged. And we know how important it is to keep those homes up and not let them go out of the market because, you know, the, the home fell out of repair and, and somebody couldn't keep up with it. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Michael Matlin. Hey, thank you so much, Nikki. All right, guys. Well, she said, my name is Michael Matlin. Definitely excited to be here with you guys today and share the good news here of the Rural Disaster Home Repair Grant Program, a brand new program. Um, thank you to all the partners that are on. And uh, like I said, excited to get started. So with that, here we go. So the agenda today, we're going to cover just some general programs we have at Rural Development here. Um, we get more specific and go into the home repair grant summary, the new program. We're going to look at how to locate and identify presidentially declared disaster areas, or PDDAs for short. We're going to go through some general applicant eligibility. We're going to go through grant specific information, then a couple a quick slide for our packagers, and then questions at the end, like Nikki said. A quick program overview of some of the items we offer here. Um, first off, rural home loans, the direct 502 or the 502 direct program, as we call it. This helps low and very low income home applicants purchase decent, safe, and sanitary housing in eligible rural areas. We also offer another program. We call it our 504 home repair program, and it's going to be very similar to the disaster program we go over here today with some key differences, but this is our housing repair loan and grant program. It provides loans to very low income homeowners to repair, improve or modernize their homes and also provides grants to 62 and older households, uh, very low income homeowners to remove health and safety hazards. And lastly, not least, but lastly, uh, we have single family housing guaranteed program and to share some of that 
Uh, we've got Mr. Kevin Smith with us to talk about the Guaranteed Program. Kevin? Thanks, Michael. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. First, I'd like to thank State Director Granley and her staff for providing the opportunity for the Single Family Housing Guaranteed Loan Program to participate in this event. The Guaranteed Loan Program utilizes private sector lenders in providing up to 100% financing for very low, low and moderate income families in rural areas. These rural areas are the same areas as um, utilized for the direct program. The loan pro program provides 30 year fixed rate mortgages with an interest rate negotiated between the lender and the borrower. There is no set maximum purchase limit the appraised value and repayment ability would dictate the maximum loan amount. The program does include a 1% upfront guarantee fee to rural development, which can be included in the loan amount, even if it's above the appraised value. Additionally, there's a 35 basis point annual fee that is required to be paid to rural devel development yearly, and that's for the life of the loan. If you have any further questions regarding the guaranteed loan program, you can email me at Kevin dot smith at usda.gov. Thank you, and I appreciate the opportunity to share with you the information regarding the Guaranteed Loan Program. With that, back to you, Michael. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kevin. All right. So quick overview of the program. $55.7 million were made available um, for the Home Repair Grant Program. Of that, 41 million will be allocated to the impacted states. Uh, South Dakota has, has been tiered funding, been allotted 1.5 million. Now, there's 14.7 million held in the national office and a reserve account. So if we go through our $1.5 million that we have been allocated, we can tap into the, the reserve account, the 14.7 you see there. Um, so the plan is to keep rolling this program forward into the next physical year um, if we haven't used up all those funds just yet. Yep. So here we have just a list of the affected states that do have presidentially declared disaster areas in calendar year 2022. And it says so far, and you'll see the kind of the asterisks up there and the caveat there at the bottom. Um, this list is still being updated. Um, the counties and the states for disaster areas in calendar year 2022. Um, and we'll go through how to be able to check the most updated list here. But this is a list with all the states uh, that do have presidentially declared disaster area. To kind of help, we've we've done a map of South Dakota here. And in that map, you can see the counties that do have um, the declared disaster areas in 2022. So a good majority, majority 35 was the, the total that we came up with, the most recent list. And then on the next slide, we have um, the list of the counties. So there you can see the, the counties listed out, the 35 different counties, and then the reservations at the bottom um, that also have presidentially declared disaster areas. To check a more updated list, or how did we get that list, we simply went to FEMA.gov. You see the link there in the top right hand corner, um, FEMA.gov, and it's forward slash disaster, forward slash um, declarations. And you'll select South Dakota. If you'll look here on the left hand side, um, South Dakota is the state. You'll do years 2022 and 2023. I'm taking explain, explain why we have 2023 in there as well. Towards the end of the year in 2022, there were some disaster areas in December um, or some incidences that took place in late December, and they weren't declared as a disaster area until 2023. So when we do this search, we want to include 2022 and 2023 and search the disaster areas, and we'll just pay very close attention to the incident date. Um, we want to make sure that that happened in 2022. All right. So the link up here in this, this PowerPoint is going to be shared. Um, the link up top is the unnumbered letter that issues our guidance on the grant. Kind of gives the guidelines the overview um, of everything that we expect here on the grant or, or what our protocol is. The grant is up to $40,675 in grant assistance to repair disaster-related damage in rural homes located in a presidentially declared disaster area in calendar year. 2022, we've talked about that. 
Um, so the income must not exceed the adjusted low income income limit for the borrower in the household. And the 62 year age restriction that we talked about before on our 504 program that does not apply to this program. So this does not have an age restriction on it. Yep. Maximum grant assistance, an individual of 40,675. It does not have a loan requirement. So you do not also have to get a loan in conjunction with um, the repair grant. Um, over here for our packagers on the right, you'll see attachment two. This is a notification of approval. Um, this is a requirement of the disaster grant. And the RD form 3550-24, the grant agreement, is not needed for these. Important to notate here, the disaster grant funds, if an individual were to use it, it does not impact their 504, their repair grant. It does not deduct from their lifetime uh, grant assistance amount. So this is completely separate than the 504 listed above. Um, completely separate, although a lot of the guidelines are the same. Um, it is a separate grant as been listed before. Yeah, so what can it be used for? Um, it can be used for home repair expenses incurred prior to application, it can be used for site preparation. Um, it does have to be for the individual's primary residence, uh, and it can be used for payments of materials prior to the site delivery. Um, so that's unique about this program. So the grant funds may not be awarded when other sources such as FEMA or insurance has provided funding for the same disaster cause repair. And what I like to use here is, you know, if we have a roof and it's a $20,000 repair and insurance has covered already the $20,000 to repair the roof, um, then no, we can't, we can't use the grant in that. But however, if insurance or FEMA came in and they covered you know 50 percent of the roof then we could use grant grant funds for the remaining amount important notes for our packagers here so the rural disaster home repair grant fee that we can charge is up to a thousand dollars to the packagers if they're doing a 504 loan like we spoke about earlier um, in conjunction with they can you can charge 750 for that so the maximum alloc uh, allocated or allotted fee um, for one applicant, if they're using both programs, is 1750. Um, but just for the rural disaster home repair grant, uh, it's a thousand dollars. The memorandum of understanding um, is optional in this case for our packagers. And that's it. That's all I have. So definitely open up for questions. And you can see there if any questions on how to apply or for more information, our general mailbox there, um, single family housing direct, so SFHD direct, SD at usda.gov. And then we have our phone number there, 605-352-1100. That's all I have. So at this point in time, if you have a question, um, you can either put it in the chat, you could raise your hand, um, and we can call on you. Does anyone have any questions for Michael and team? This is Jennifer, Executive Director for Black Hills Council of Local Governments, and I was wondering if there is um, some kind of schedule or something that shows it says income cannot exceed the adjusted low income threshold. Is that something that we would be able to look at? Um, I think when you're talking with people, if you can just tell them that number right away, um, and I'm sure it's based off of number of people in the household and other things as well, but that would be helpful so that we would know whether or not to even pursue it, I guess. Great question, Jennifer. Yes, absolutely. Because if, if they're not going to be within the income limits, you kind of want to know where they're at. So we can share that with you in the whole group. So, yeah, we have our income limits. Um, there's very low, low and moderate. And obviously for this disaster program, we're looking at the low level for the income. If you're looking at the actual 504, then it would be the very low. But we can share that. Okay, thank you. And actually, uh, 
Michael Fry did us a favor and put that in the chat. He's got a link to that. Very good, thank you. So, yeah. Other questions? Okay. If so you and... Oh, oh, I was going to say, if nobody else has any, I was just going to mm -hmm. ask, I know that there was the $1,000 um, for packaging. In the past, I, I don't know that the planning districts have been very involved in this. The place where I could see we might need to be utilized is with Ogawa, Lakota County. Um, and so I don't know, does USDA have staff doing this or or who who's helping roll out the program, I guess? Well, so, we are looking. Go, go ahead, ahead Nikki. Roxanne. Nope, go ahead, okay. Roxanne. Okay, we are looking for packagers to help us with this program so we can cover all the areas. So if anybody is interested, absolutely, please reach out to us. Um, there is an MOU out there. Again, um, that is optional. Um, but yes, we're definitely looking for packagers. Otherwise, if you know someone who is eligible and you're not interested in package them, send them directly to us too, because we'll do both ways. We'll work with the packagers, or if there's no packagers available, we'll work directly through the applicant. Okay, very so, good. Michael and Roxanne, I can see in the chat that both Kim Thompson and Paul Bar Bartlett would like to know how to become a packager. That is something if you want to leave your information, we'll probably reach out to you directly. Um, there is, like I said, we can look at the MOU option and then we can kind of visit about what areas you are looking at covering. So if you want to leave your contact information, um, Michael and I can give you guys a call back and kind of get of a plan for that. So. Jennifer, did you have another question? No, Sorry, I felt like I ended up cutting you off uh, noticing those chat questions. No, we've uh, we've partnered with USDA on many other types of funding programs. I guess our our ability to assist would depend on if you know if there's six of these, we could certainly help. If there's forty six of them, we probably can't take on that kind of um, work right now. So it really just depends on how much interest there is. Um, but we are. Uh, we're always out in our communities and out in those counties specifically that were impacted. And so I think the biggest thing for us would be at least, you know, helping to let people know that the program is out there um, if there is a need for assistance. So. Okay. Um, and we Tom appreciate Thompson. that, Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks, Roxanne. Good to see you again. Uh, Kim Thompson has the question, are there individuals that are packaging on the reservations? Not directly with this disaster program um, right now, but we are looking to add some. So we have a couple other partners um, with um, the tribal areas that we will also be reaching out to, but at this point we don't. So if you know someone or you're interested, please let us know as soon as possible. And, and even if you're not interested in packaging, word of mouth is so huge for us. So if you could at least let an individual know, um, we know a lot of people come to the housing authorities or the tribal offices, if you could just be the word of mouth for this program, because basically it's first come first serve. So we wanna use those dollars and help the people in South Dakota. Any other questions? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Um, just so you know, this was recorded. So like I said, we will follow up with an email and the recording. Feel free to share it with others. If there are other people that you know could use this information, we wanna get this as far and wide as we can so that we make sure homeowners are getting the, the help they need. Um, I'm just seeing if there's any other last minute questions. I see Michael Fry is typing something. Let's see. Oh, just a message to Kim saying that he will follow up. Um, like I said, the nice thing is with this chat, it is recorded and uh, we can follow up with any other questions that pop up here. 
look for that email and it'll probably be tomorrow, I would say. Yeah, tomorrow that we'll have the recording available and reach out at any point in time. We're happy to help. And thank you so much for joining us because we know you're all uh, out there in the communities and can help us spread the word about this and get it out to homeowners. Thanks everyone, have a great day.